Hey y'all, it's Young Honey, and we're doing an insurgency in Far Cry 6 today. I hope you enjoy. Real quick before we start, here's some mental health resources. Always keep your head right. Stay up. Let's get right into this. Peace out. Hey y'all, what it do? It's Young Honey, and we're doing an insurgency today. And while we do the insurgency, we're going to talk about some really, really, really messed up uh, you know, kind of operations that different intelligence agencies have undertaken uh, over the past, uh, you know, century and a half. Um, most of it's the CIA and FBI, but one of them is the entirety of NATO, and I feel is super important to point out just because the scope of this operation to make everyone just kind of wide eye at government a little bit <coughs> because while i personally support a state that understands like what's going on in the world around them and is well informed and has a well-maintained intelligence community like like i think that's a massively important thing and i have a lot of respect for people that work inside of that inside of that business inside of that line of work but there have been standards that have been put in place in the past few years that did not exist prior and some of the operations we're going to talk about today are the reason why those standards exist let me get my bearings real quick i got a little lost I think we're supposed to be going over there, yeah. But yeah, the very first thing on the list that I want to talk about is this one is an FBI fuck up through and through. And I'm going to give some context to kind of back up why the FBI was doing what they were doing, but also to kind of explain like why this was such a drastic fuck up. Because it's really, really, really a complex situation that I feel I feel can push people either way in terms of like leaning and thinking. And so I just want to do a little bit of justice to both sides. Um, but the first one we're going to cover is the Ruby Ridge Massacre. Um, what happened in Ruby Ridge was without a doubt one of the biggest failures in intelligence that i think i think most people can think of it's up there with waco and i'm gonna do a i'm gonna do a video on all of these and a little bit more just to kind of uh do even more justice but what happened in Ruby Ridge was essentially an 11-day standoff between the FBI and the Weaver family that left members of both parties dead. And it, uh, I believe the U.S. government ended up being, uh, they were sued by the Weaver family and were found liable for uh, maybe $3 million in damages. Uh, uh, that number could be low even you know like i'm spacing on the number off the top of my head but they settled for literally millions at the end of the day because the united states government knew that they fucked up here and i think that i think that that part is really relevant to mention just primarily because like it's not often that they admit that but this standoff started because Randy Weaver, who was the father uh, in the Weaver family, he, um, him and his wife and family had moved to a new, new area, I believe, and were looking to get involved socially and ended up with a group that was parallel to white supremacists and was home to a lot of white supremacists and so off the bat it's it's not a good look for them but like that's kind of the social circle that they fell into there and so i personally got issues with that but you know i don't think that it, i don't think that them looking for a social circle and being lost 
like they were in my opinion, justifies what happened to them. But um, just because I, I really feel like there's always the opportunity to educate people about why certain views are ignorant and why like it's just not worth it to dwell on differences like that. Um, I feel like that's always there. And like that's important to me. But at the same time, eventually, they start like the family started getting closer and closer with a lot of the people there and Randy Weaver was eventually involved in a sting operation with the FBI and a white supremacist group. Um they believed that Randy Weaver was trafficking weapons and had set up like a massive deal for this, or I believe that was the case. Once again, could be wrong in that uh, circumstance a little bit. Um, but they essentially had tried to set up a sting assuming that Randy Weaver was a large time weapons dealer when that couldn't be further from the case, you know? And so the FBI ends up staking out their, uh, their home. They end up staking out the location where they live. And this is, this is a house that is incredibly far removed from everything. Like, we're, we're really, we're really talking like it's, it's out in the boonies, you know? And so there's a lot of land to get caught up in. There's a, there's a lot of room to get lost. And that's what happens to the FBI. And they made a few wrong turns. And as a result of that, they ended up coming across the Weaver family's dog. And there are different accounts about what happened. But what I believe is most likely is there was a short confrontation. There was a shoot off where people didn't really understand what was happening. There was an argument between both parties because what the fuck is the federal government doing on my land? But also what the fuck are you doing? Like selling, uh, like trafficking weapons, like... There's that, there's that confusion, and unfortunately, Randy Weaver's son, and I believe his best friend, uh, and dog were shot and killed. Um, and so, after that con uh, confrontation, everyone just sort of scrammed. Uh, the FBI, or not, I believe it was the FBI at that point, it may have been local authorities. Um, Everyone, everyone in that situation just kind of scrams and National Guard is called international pres- like, not international, but like, the president's involved, like, federal government is alerted, like, it starts to become a developing international story, and so, this is all just slowly building up as the Weaver family is hiding inside of their house, and everyone is trying to get calm and while the weaver family is trying to get calm the government is understandably trying to prepare for a situation that they know fucking nothing about they don't know how many cows how many people were shot uh within the weaver party they don't know a lot about what happened there they know about their reports really quick let me reset the recording reset but yeah, they really only know about their reports. And that's that's problematic to go off of. And it's not because the intelligence community can't gather reports. They're, they're very good at it. They are remarkable at it. They are terrifyingly good at it. Existentially terrifyingly good at it. But not that short like not in that short of a term so they don't really know what's going on and in the early days of the confrontation um randy's wife like they like their kids are in the house full families in the house uh the mother of this household like she ultimately gets shot and is killed and they drag the body inside or she was uh she was partially inside and they were able to get like her inside Sort of deal. Like they get her inside, and the intelligence community is not aware that she's dead. So what follows for the rest of the standoff for a lot of this is 
the local authorities and the FBI literally going, hey, like, like reaching, like name dropping the mom, like saying, come on out, like we have food for you and your kids, like please just be a good mom, sort of deal, not realizing that they fucking killed her. And that blows my mind. That's not just a lapse in intelligence. That's My recording randomly cut off, so part of like part of my whole spiel got cut off, and I lost some oh gameplay. Like I'm gonna have to edit it down. But I think Lola, where I was I like you what I was saying right was this is just such an immense lapse on behalf of the intelligence community that it's That's it's just say. disappointing. It's disheartening that something like this could happen because. You want to be able to trust the intelligence community. You want to be able to trust that we have good people in charge, that we're making good decisions, and that we're not fucking people over when we're gathering intelligence to make the rest of our world safe. You feel me? And so that's that's something that I feel like is really important to bring attention to, and it's something that has always super bothered me. Like. This this happened because of a miscommunication. This happened because of a failure to properly collect like data and prop <clears throat> I died. This this just happened as a result of a stream of failures. And again. Like again. I'm gonna do more in-depth videos about these things. Because this is a very oversimplified version. But what you gotta understand is this is this was an example of overreach to a ridiculous extent. Like a situation where everything devolved to the worst possible of circumstances. And it happened quickly. This took place only over the course of only 11 play days. 11 days, and Randy Weaver lost most of his family. Like he lost, he lost his wife, he lost a kid, he lost his friend, he lost his dog. Like his life was changed over the course of those 11 days. And so, I like I said, I I have I have reservations about advocating for him as a person. I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. I don't know if he was trafficking arms. What I do know is that everyone has a right to due process. Everyone has a right to actually feel safe and to be able to function and not be concerned about federal overreach like that, you know? Like, I feel, I feel like, I feel so much could have been avoided if more people had taken responsibility inside of positions of, of power. And I feel like local law enforcement really, 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 really scared themselves in the situation. I think, I think that they built up the threat of the Weaver family in their mind to just a ridiculous extent and it ultimately justified bringing in the extent of reinforcements that they did and it led to those failures that i'm describing and that's that's the problem these things can't these things can't happen because these are people's lives regardless of whether or not randy weaver himself is a good man 
What if it happened to someone that was absolutely a good person? What if it happened to someone that absolutely did nothing wrong? You know, like... It, 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 it feels like such a slippery slope and just a path that we really cannot follow. And so I think that raising awareness about that is fairly important. And I think it's also important to see Brett to mention the importance of, uh, the, of law enforcement throughout all these things. Because, well, personally, I don't believe in local law enforcement to a huge extent. Um, I think that they could be replaced through other options. I do think that the intelligence community does a lot of work. I think they do a lot of solid work. And this is an example of a lapse in their judgment, but it's also a testament to how they really, really should be operating. <laughs> you know, like this is like these are the levels of perfection that these need that these people need to operate under because you can't go around fucking with people's lives. That that whole siege really, really always rubbed me the wrong way. And I think that's one of the biggest blunders in intelligence history, to be honest. Um, but yeah. Nice, right, so I'm just reviewing my little noty note page. I don't have super detailed notes. I uh, I have written about some of these before, and so like I can't talk about them more extensively than others. Um, and so I do really want to get more in depth videos on these done, and I want to. I, I don't want to do them with a gaming backdrop. I want to do them like actually like short documentary style. Um, just so I could force myself to learn how to edit like that. You feel me? Um. But yeah, I really feel like I got a solid list like for this. And if you're interested in learning about Ruby Ridge a little bit more, um, I believe PBS has a documentary on it, or it's either PBS or BBC. And they have Randy Weaver's daughter, who as uh, one of the lead narrators and one of the lead people that they spoke to for it. And her insight on that didn't really change my opinion too much because, you know, I, I got issues with white supremacists. I got issues with that side of life. But to hear her oh, perspective as a child on that really, really was jarring. Like... Like, there's some things that you listen to, and you're just like, Anyone I need like a fucking shower. Like, I, I'm not okay after that. Like, it was one of those situations. And so, I don't know. I, I really wanted to talk about that because those lapses deteriorate trust, deteriorate the trust between the government and the public to a point that we really can't afford right now. Like, I say this as someone who's very interested in public policy and advocates for a solid central power. Like, we really cannot afford these kinds of problems. It's just not viable to run a country that way and to continue moving that way. And so we, we've made a lot of strides since then we've also seen failures on behalf of local law enforcement like in Valde at Parkland and different events like that but at the same time we are seeing the intelligence community and we are seeing the world as a whole move towards more informed operations and I think that that's really cool in itself so there's going to be a lot of negative things said throughout this video, but I will say that given the work, not of, not of these governments for the most part, but of different special interest groups and specific activists pushing the needle forward, we've really gotten to a point where we're moving towards more humane method, methods of controlling 
deep, deep, deep issues within society. I'm gonna reset the recording real quick. Reset it, did, 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 did. So, when I say controlling I different alarm. issues within society, that that means a few things, you know? Um, and Two it has points. positive and negative connotations. And to be honest with you, this next one is gonna, this next point is really gonna, I think, emphasize that. Where it's all about perspective. Immediately following World War II, NATO countries created a mass groups to stay behind militaries. They called it Operation Gladio. These armies were there uh, to prevent the spread of communism after the war. And they were supplied by different weapon caches that were scattered all throughout Italy is where this primarily took place though many nato countries in the area ended up having those stay behind militaries so when their goal was to fight communism uh, but it couldn't be through the government they ended up turning towards individuals who were not allowed to serve in government because they were mentally unstable they had fringe beliefs. They were deeply racist. They were just not great people. Those were the motherfuckers who were recruited for this and they were given the locations of different weapon caches throughout the country and throughout other countries. This was, this was helped by the CIA. Now, listen, listen. CIA isn't the worst entity in the world. It's up there. And they did not set up Operation Gladio entirely. But holy fucking shit. You look at their involvement in the early stages and just kind of like pushing all the countries in the direction of setting up these militaries, it's crazy. And what these militaries would do is they would go to left wing rallies. They would go to they would go to different workers' rights groups, feminist groups, and they would straight up fucking assault them. Like there were straight up terrorist attacks where the weapons were linked to these weapon caches, and this was funded by NATO. And if that ain't deeply disturbing, dog, if that ain't fucking terrifying. Like, I don't know what is. The reason why I put this up here and the reason why I say that, you know, you could consider these things like a good or a bad thing is you could look at it as they were trying to prevent another invasion of Europe, right? That's a proactive step. But at the end of the day, you have to look at their execution of it. And you have to look at the goals of the individual who was passing those policies and who was saying, yeah, this is the right way to go about it. You have to look at their own biases, their own beliefs, who they hate, their enemies, what, what influences all of their bullshit, you know? And that's, that's a lot to delve into. And it's really no one's place to be dictating political discourse like that. You cannot use violence to propel discourse it, it 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 works to an extent when people have been unheard but we're not talking about people being unheard we're talking about there's like these militaries were created out of straight up paranoia <laughs> like come on i see you sniper Yeah. But yeah, so the idea that countries were willing to do this is really, really, really shocking. It, it's sorry. upsetting. This le like the actual, uh, the actual uh, operation, Gladio, was leaked in the 1980s, I believe, by Italy's prime minister at the time. And 
it it literally rocked the fucking world because people realized, holy shit, they're suppressing political ideology. And whether you're left wing, whether you're right wing, whether whether you agree with how they went about doing it or not, I think that like whether you think that that's a good way of going about doing it or not, I think that everyone kind of agrees that at the end of the day, we're all entitled to our beliefs as long as you're not a fucking idiot. You know, like, ah, oh, God damn it. I'm dying way too much on this run. I think that we're all entitled to our different beliefs. I think that we're entitled to feel how we feel politically. And I think that everyone has a different motivation for feeling that way. I don't think that people just wake up and go, I support this, this, and this, uh, like groundbreaking red flag type issue. Like, let's say, let, let's say someone go like just wakes up and goes pro choice, pro gun, and I'm pro annex in Canada. Bro, they have their fucking reasons. All right. That's not my business to figure out. And I think that operations meant to limit that are just inherently super terrifying and something to definitely look into. I've been doing a lot of research on Gladio, but I don't have a lot of my notes pulled up and I haven't done any formal writing about it. So a lot of my thoughts aren't like fully connected on it yet. And so this is one of those that I don't know as much about and that if you're interested in this, I would really, really, really implore you to look into it a little bit more and to try to figure out what the fuck entirely happened there. Because it really is a crazy story and it, it, it ain't right what we did. Like what the United States did, what NATO did, and what, what the world kind of came to during that time out of fear. It's really, really, it, 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 it's disgusting and it's upsetting because I, I like to think that we're all better than that. Like, I literally like to think that we are better than imposing that kind of legislation and targeting people like that. There were so many superpowers that just disagreed. They just said, fuck it, no, we disagree. Like, there have been multiple points where I think that humanity has made the wrong decisions while voting. I also like to think that we've learned from them fairly quickly. You know? You, you, you elect a complete fucking moron one cycle, you elect a politically capable complete more on the next cycle, and then it continues. You know, like, like there's some sense to how things are conducted now, but... Hmm. Dang, oh, lost the plot. Wait, no, I let that motherfucker out of the cage. Why is it attacking me? Listen. But yeah, I just, I really can't get behind the suppression I was seeing there. That, that's just some next level bullshit. I'm gonna reset the recording. Reset it, baby. This is another one that I, I don't have too much to say about it. I just don't. I wish I had more to say about it because it's, it, it's such a clusterfuck of a time period. Like, it, it's a very interesting time period to explore. But it's also such a ridiculous fucking time period. You know? Like... When I say that this shit's ridiculous, I mean... We're talking Reagan himself had to pardon countless people in his administration after they'd been convicted of high treason. Like all while covering for him, you know? 
Uh, we're talking. We're talking some crazy bullshit here. We're talking about the Iran Contra affair, and during this time period, not only did we sell weapons to people that we were not allied with, and use that money to fund right-wing terror groups, we managed to introduce crack to the inner city. Pretty fucking impressive, you know? Like, <laughs> I'd say that that's a fuck up. I'd say that that's a massive mistake. I'd say that that's a human right violation. Like, the United States really, really, really got fucked over on that one, and we just don't talk about it that much. I think that it got a song, it definitely, I know for a fact that it got a song in American Dad. Oh, um, if you watch the episode about Ollie North's gold, it kind of explains the situation, but what happened there was the United States was trying to fund a guerrilla group in i believe nicaragua but congress had passed legislation saying nah you can't do that and <laughs> so let me let me read these notes real quick so that i don't fuck this up they they like congress blocked traditional funding because of the nature of the group and because it wouldn't really further anything to be funding that group in terms of united states interest it wouldn't it wouldn't really go that far however reagan was an outspoken advocate for the group and they like he he had a history of supporting them and so they wanted to make it happen you know can you can't blame them they, they just wanted to be boys i guess i don't fucking, i don't fucking know right so You got all that going on. The solution, the solution to Congress not funding, ever, like funding that group directly, was let's sell weapons to the Iranians. The like some of the people that we were having uh, issues with at the time, some people who held hot like United States hostages around the time that we famously did not negotiate with terrorists. And the official justification for the transactions were, we're sending them weapons in exchange for hostages. We're sending the weapons in exchange for United States citizens. And it's not like we got United States citizens out of it. We did bring people home, but it's, it's pretty clear that that's not all that happened. And here's the motherfucker. We don't know all that happened because Oliver North and a few other members of Nixon, or not Nixon, Reagan's administration, who were in the intelligence community, destroyed the fucking files, which is really not suspicious at all. Just not, just not. But yeah, that instability, that instability in Nicaragua is found throughout other parts of South America and it's United States influence because of our policies during those time periods. And we would have so many less problems if incidents like the Iran-Contra affair had been properly addressed and if we didn't completely try to reshape every nation's politics that we, we come across. Like, this is a consistent trend with the United States. You know, like, we do this a lot. We're really aggressive about it. And it, it's it's disheartening to see. So, you know, between selling weapons to Iranians, not really getting 
everything we wanted out of hostage negotiations and funding like an alt right group <clears throat> between all of that it's gonna be chalked up as a failure we we didn't improve anything with iran we didn't we didn't improve anything overall nothing really changed in the grand scheme of things and so it, it just kind of left us at a loss and that that sucks <laughs> It's not what you want seeing from things. That our tax money is going towards paying. It's just not it's just not what you're looking for. So we got we got two more. Two more to talk about. Right? I'ma get let me check on this recording. Okay. So this next one is a little bit rough to talk about. Um, I'm going to try to sugarcoat as much of it as possible just because like, I'm a fairly blunt person. This is something I have researched in depth before and I'm a little bit desensitized to it just because of that. But it's also incredibly serious and like it, it's something that I feel we really need to talk about like if nothing else like this is probably one of the most important things on on the list and that's the fact that the cia uses enhanced interrogation tactics let me reset my recording reset it now you're probably wondering if you're not already familiar what are enhanced interrogation tactics and well I'm happy to tell you, I'm not happy to tell you, but like, I'd, I'd be happy to explain it to you so that we could, we, we could complain about this together. All right. <laughs> Enhanced interrogation tactics is a nice way of saying torture. And by torture, I don't mean like medieval kinds of torture. I don't mean, you don't mean like you're, uh, your Bugsy call kind of toy. We're not. We're we're not talking. We're not talking. The uh, the old forms, the old mechanisms of torture. We're talking. We're talking very new and very brutal efforts to completely ruin an individual's ability to think for themselves, to be rational to feel comfortable in their own skin and to feel sane in order to get them to divulge information. And first of all, first of all, there are a lot of critics of, God damn it. There are a lot of, there are a lot of critics of enhanced interrogation tactics on the basis that, listen, if you're being tortured to an extreme extent at some point, you're going to fucking tell someone what they want to hear. Whether it's true or not, you'll tell someone what they want to hear. Everyone has a breaking point. This isn't on some, this isn't on some unbreakable kind of, kind of ridiculous situation. This is just the human body and mind can only take so much before it snaps. And the United States government has had control of some people in Guantanamo for over 20 years, right? It's not like these people would be all together there mentally at this point. They likely would have said whatever they have been wanting or they whatever they think they, their captors want to hear. You know, they've already probably tried that. And so you big critics of enhanced interrogation tactics will bring up the fact that the information you get isn't even really that credible it literally could be someone just trying to stop being tortured stop getting tortured and can you fucking blame them like like can you blame someone for not wanting to be tortured and just saying whatever bullshit like they think people want to hear 
strike the core back up now. Like y'all think that is really out what of pocket? Does this unlock? Okay. Like, no. Careful, Danny. Both the alarms, it doesn't matter, we should be able to cruise through this. So it's it, it's called enhanced interrogation tactics because we can't technically torture people anymore. Like the United States, NATO, like United Nations, and whatever fucking power you want to invoke. We're they're all above it. And so we have enhanced interrogation tactics. <coughs> I'm gonna give it a sec. I'm gonna shut the fuck up and just kill people here for a second. Because I have a list of what of different examples of what this is of what this could be. Alright, methods include beating, binding people in stress positions, uh Putting them subject to uh, deafening noises, sleep disruption, resource de deprivation, waterboarding, walling. If you're not familiar with walling, a uh, super creative way to torture someone. You literally take them, throw their head into a really hard wall like concrete or something like that. Big brain. Sexual hum humiliation and there's uh, subject to element exposure and confinement. Now, if, if, if you're not familiar with the impacts that some of these things can cause on someone, like you, you're not, you're not the same after those things. You, I, I highly doubt that someone can leave a situation like that and ever feel safe again like literally ever feel calm or normal or secure. And this, unlike the last few things that we talked about, this is happening today. This is happening all the time. It's funded with taxpayer dollars. Like, like this is shit that we pay for. And that's why there have been a lot of calls to shut down places like Guantanamo Bay. That's why there have been a lot of calls to shut down various black sites and to work on stopping these kinds of things. It's, it's, it's impossible to actually like, you know, play a video game and go through every single reason and every single thing that occurs. Looks like but this has need help. truly if, if you're someone that is interested in advocating for bettering the government or for replacing the government with something better or whatever have you, if you're someone that wants to see a change politically, this is a place that you can really get involved and actually make a fairly large change in the human rights situation. And it, it, it's something really worth paying attention to because it's, it's morally indefensible. I truly believe that like my kids eventually, if they find out about these things, would look at me and go, did you know about this? Like, what did you do about this? And I do like, I complained about, I complained about it on YouTube. I don't know what to tell you champ. Like there, it just wasn't, it wasn't that big of a deal. We didn't know about it. Like that's not the excuse I want to be giving. I don't think that's the excuse most people want to be giving. You know, so if you're interested in different in, 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 in subjects like what was brought up in this video, but for the most part, something you can actively be involved in right now, like right this very second and start contributing to off the bat is one of those things. Like you can start advocating for people right motherfucking now. And I think that that's a massively important thing. I think that it's a role that we should all be looking into. And I think, I, I just think that if you're passionate about human rights causes, if you're passionate about seeing a change in the world, this may be one of the places that you really observe.
for the future. You guys are allowed out, you know. I've accidentally shot him. I'm just gonna go for the people in there. But yeah, so this last one. This last one is low key crazy. Um, primarily because, you know, you, you hear about it and at first you think bullshit and then you Google it and then you're like, oh my God. Um, points out, bro. This, we wouldn't know if this was currently happening. Reset. James Barnabas, please relax. Bang old dog is growling for some reason. So, the FBI were to monitor, infiltrate, discredit, disrupt, various political organizations from the 1950s to the 1970s targeting civil rights and advocacy groups. James, it's okay, I implore you to relax. James. But yeah, these advocacy groups were uh, feminists, people working to lower the wage gap, civil, civil rights activists, workers' rights activists, you know, people that generally went against supporting large corporations, um, people that supported quality, couple really well-known people were targeted by uh, the FBI at this point, like Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Aretha, Aretha fucking Franklin. Like, they, they, they targeted everyone during this time period, and that's not only a massive invasion of rights, it's... It's honestly fucking sickening to think about because it was based on like gender and racial prejudice. Like we're not we're not talking about a justifiable reason to be spying on motherfuckers here. I'm a fucking fool. We're not talking about a reasonable reason to be spying on people. We're just talking paranoia, fear, and hate. And the way that the FBI would do this is oftentimes they would use the media to convince individuals that some groups were way more radical than others and slander some individuals. Malcolm X was a famously radical person and that leads to a conflation that he was violent. In reality, Malcolm X was slightly radical. He, he believed in aggression. He was not what people made him out to be. He was not inherently violent. He was not a monster. He wasn't, he wasn't brute force. Like history makes him out to be at times. Like a lot of whitewashed history makes him out to be at times. And that that image that had been cr crafted of him for, and maintained for so long was able to stick because of the Operation Cointel Pro. 
And that's just, it, it, it's wholeheartedly upsetting to me because I see it in conversations with my parents, even, where I can talk to them about it, like different, different figures from that time, bring up certain talking points. And I can literally tell you what came from the government, like that my parents believe and have believed for their whole lives. You know, like... That's unreal, man. That's unreal, and it does a disservice to the entire population. It's not right, it's not fair. And it's something that needs to be called out and addressed at every uh, possible opportunity, because, dog, if we don't have access to actual information and what the fuck is going on, what the fuck are we doing? Like, what the fuck are we doing here, you know? Shit. Camera. Like, I absolutely can't sanction extra ju extra judicial killings. Like, we're talking Black Panther leaders were assassinated. We're talking false accusations against countless people were levied. Per like, FBI agents perjured themselves. Evidence was withheld. Witnesses were intimidated. They were harassed and there were like illegal instances of like violent actions on behalf of the FBI. Like against this, com like against like equal rights communities. And that's just, it's, it's baffling to me that that could be allowed and that anyone at any point in history could really justify that much less a modern government. And so I feel like if there's nothing else to take away from the video, I mean, listen, we're making strides and we're doing a great job all around. Like, like I try to pay attention to modern conspiracy theories as much as possible. And I can tell you that so much of what I've seen is just not true. It's, it, 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 it's people grasping at straws to feel better. Like, there's so much more to be concerned about out there. But we also don't know. It's important to make sure that you review situations with a critical eye. It's important that you make sure to go to primary sources, the people who were there. Like, first responders, go to actual quotes, rely on the wealth of information that we have, given the internet and modern times, to inform your opinions because you never know what kind of false flag, you never know what kind of psyop, you never know what kind of misinformation camp, you never know what kind of this, that, or the other is gonna end up coming into play, whether it's a serious attempt from United States government or even another power just trying to fuck around, you know? Like we live in a time where technology manipulates so much of what we do and it's important to just not be fucking stupid about things and to actually pay attention. So on that note, I'm gonna go by everything from Lola Shop. So here, I'm actually gonna hold on to this note. I usually just crumple them toss them away but i'm gonna hold on to that one because i do want to do longer form videos of all of these i feel like there's so much to get to that i really didn't and that's just kind of scope of time of the video sort of deal but i don't know i'm not i'm not putting this out there to be like intelligence community is bad i'm really not i really really believe in the work of some intelligence communities but at the same time you need third party evaluation to make sure that everything is running smoothly, to make sure that people are not being cheated, to make sure that everything ends up okay in the long run, you know? Like, I, I think that the overall goal of intelligence should be raising the the quality of life for everyone. And so, Finally, a young in doing that, that 
we can't we can't cross people off we can't we can't subjugate certain people we can't we can't make mistakes like at ruby ridge and waco we can't we can't be vilifying people like that and absolute like we absolutely can't be engaging in, 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 in conflicts that don't even exist such as like we saw in operation gladio you know there there's just so much out there to be critical of and to look at and to learn about and i think that it's both a lot of fun and also really important to do so on that note we're done with this insurgency we got everything from love the shop i love y'all peace out Yo, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. If you like this kind of content, please like, subscribe, let me know. I love making more stuff. I want to make things that people would enjoy. And every bit of feedback is massively helpful. So yeah, I hope you have a beautiful day, everyone. Peace out.